Hi, welcome to uh, Do It Yourself Projects. Um, this is Chris Muron, and I'm going to be the person who's going through to help you with your Do It Yourself Projects. Uh, this will be a series that will be under my YouTube uh, user account. Hopefully, it'll help you if you don't have uh, ideas on ideas on simple uh, Do It Yourself stuff around your your house, uh, your auto, your scooters, your other toys. Um, I'm going to put these out. They're going to be simple and they're going to start off real easy. It's basically what I'm doing as I go along. And uh, hopefully it'll teach you something or maybe just give us some laughs. Who knows? Um, today we're going to be putting uh, changing spark plugs on a 2001 uh, Grand Cherokee Laredo. All right, so here we go. Let's start you off by telling you what you need. Okay, you need six. That's right, six spark plugs for this car. This is an inline six cylinder, 4.0 liter. Um, one for each cylinder. So whatever car you have, uh, anticipating on picking up one spark plug per cylinder. Um, these, I prefer to use platinum or double platinum or multi uh, uh, fires, uh, split fires and stuff like that uh, in my vehicles. Uh, this is the, the everyday vehicle, so I put a, a double platinum plug in it. Uh, it's made, it's a brand name plug. Uh, I'm not getting paid by them, so I'm not going to say it. You probably can see it there. That's enough said. You're also going to need simple tools. The simple tools that I have that we'll be using today are a 5 8 socket removal, a spark plug socket, excuse me, a extension. deep socket. You could also get away with a regular half inch socket and a socket wrench. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick that I do um, on my vehicles when I put them up. When I pull up my vehicles, I always clamp the hydraulic uh, lift post, whatever you want to call it, your hydraulic right there, with a vice grip. This will keep um, your hood is stable in the air and you don't have to worry about it falling down on you as long as you put that on there. So make sure that's on there tight. Give a couple tugs on the uh, hood to make sure that it's not going to slip like that. See, that wasn't on there right. All right, one second. Yeah, see, and if you don't have it up there right, big gust of wind can cause it to fall down. But that's why we check it before you go on. So, uh, like I said, uh, go ahead and check that. It's kind of a good little funny thing that happened to show, show you what can happen if you're not careful. And a funny story, if you saw my one of my other videos uh, when I was showing off my 58 um, Ford that I got recently, uh, I had the trunk fall on my 95 Mustang and it fell on me. And uh, luckily for the big rubber seal, otherwise I could have got quite hurt. All right. Now what you're seeing here is this is an inline six. All six, all six sockets are, excuse me, all six plugs are on the same side of the vehicle. Um, it's relatively simple. This doesn't have your standard plug wires. It has a rail system. Um, it has six little boots on it. Those six boots. Um, are, work just like your spark plug wires. Now if this was a regular car you'd have spark plug wires on it um, uh, and you'd need to trace your spark plug wires and do each cylinder at the same time. Being that this is a, uh, a Jeep and has this rail I can take the whole rail off at one time and kind of put lay it to the side and uh, do all the plugs and once I get done with the plugs put the reassemble the rail and put it all back together pretty pretty good. Now, when I take the rail off, I'm going to look at the bottom of the rail and check the boots. The boots uh, are the original boots that are on here. I've checked them when I've replaced the plugs prior. Um, 
should I need boots, I'm going to have to order them. So uh, I will have to put them back with the existing boots for this for the time being till I get them. All right. The first thing you have to do on this is I don't know if we can see. Let's. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good shot. Is we can go. There are four bolts on the top of the rail here, and uh, I've already pre-loosened them because I don't want to spend all day you watching me play around with the tool. But go ahead and put your half inch on your extension and loosen them until they come out. Now all I did was break them before. So once you get them about finger tight, you can go ahead and finish it up by hand. Now with this with this bolt, you want to set it someplace where you're not going to lose it. Okay. I recommend setting them right up in the hood lining, right by the, the vent, um, where they're easily seen. And you want to put each each bolt right in the same spot. That way, they don't get lost. Because um, you know we all know losing a bolt is simply a pain. You got to go through and try to replace it and everything. And that ends up getting on your nerves. Now here's the next one. That one came out pretty easy. Um, I'll slightly move the camera a little bit. The next one I can get with the extension still. I guess I popped that one pretty good pretty loose so let's go ahead and do that by hand uh, now you need to be careful when you're working over top of the battery like we are here um, where you set your tools so you don't accidentally you know cause a short short out your battery or anything good like that um, that could be kind of kind of bad um, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what the camera's sitting on if you have one of these you're, you would laugh at me because you know that's actually the battery of the camera sitting on, so I guess I will tell you. Um, but the tri little mini tripod I have works really well, so it's not in the way or anything. Now this last one's kind of a stretch. So we'll just do a little bit of work to it and get this off. That's loose. I should be able to take it off with my hand for the rest of the way. I hope. Yeah, that won't be a problem. I'm just gonna push this up. There's the fourth one. Okay, now all four bolts are out and they're put aside so they won't get lost. Now we start removing the rail. We'll start ever so slightly pulling it from the front. And as you can hear, it just pops right off. Um, so, well, as you see, this rail is basically like your giant spark plug wire. And it does all six. Oh, we got a connection back here. I forgot about. See, this is why we don't tug too hard on things. There's a connect, all the connection in the back. I don't need to take this out to get do this job, so I'm not going to disconnect it. What I'm going to do is take my hands and check all the boots, and I'm going to examine them, make sure they're not cracked. The way they came off and the way they sounded when they came off, they sounded like they were pretty good in pretty good shape, and they all look a little, little, you know, a little exhaust dust on them. But there's no cracking, um, no rubber decay, I would call it. So where, it, when you look at them, you, you, you know that it, rubber gets brittle and uh, over time. 
and I don't know what this, if this synthetic rubber is. It's not really rubber, but it seems to be holding up rather well. Um, so I don't think we need boots. So we're just going to go ahead and put this out of our way. And I'll figure out how to tuck it aside so it's out of our way so we can get at our, our uh, spark plugs. Now, remember this is still connected, so you want to be kind of gentle with it. And I think we can, actually, I think that'll work right there. So let me reposition the camera so we can see the spark plugs. And we're oh, actually over top of the rail, looking down at the head, the engine. Um, it's a little dirty. This is, like I said, it's a 10-year-old vehicle. Um, so let me get the uh, sockets, and uh, we'll start working on that. Two other very important things you probably should have for your vehicle that I forgot to mention that we need for this repair is a Haynes repair manual. Um, the reason that you should have this, and I have this for every vehicle that I own or a ch old Chilton's for my older vehicles, um, these give valuable information on teardowns. They're usually based on a complete teardown, and it doesn't cover every little thing, but it does cover the majority of the problems that you're going to encompass and the majority of things that a, uh, a DIY home person can do this. Um, so don't forget to get yourself one of these, and as you can see, mine's pretty beat up. I tend to keep mine in the car. That way, as I'm going, should something arise, um, I can verify it with the information that's here. So mine kind of get beat up. But uh, like I said, they're uh, invaluable. Each chapter's pictures, um, diagrams telling you what to do, what kind of tools are needed, exploded exploded views of many parts so you can find parts that you need and that you're able to call them by their name um, or what you know what what the, the person who wrote the book calls them. Um, some things are of course different because it's it's. Depending on your region, you might call one thing uh, a light where somebody else would, uh, you know, you might call it a, a side light or somebody else would call it a marker light or something simple like that. Um, the other thing I forgot, and I actually had to run to the store to grab these because I couldn't find mine, um, and is a feeler gauge. Um, a feeler gauge is an invariable, invariably a, a very important tool to have when you're diagnosing uh, problems throughout the engine. Yeah, what it does is it allows you to build um, depth and you can figure out how much uh, uh, space is needed, how big things are. Um, and in the case of what we'll be using for spark plugs, you can actually set the gap of the spark plugs. Now a good feeler gauge um, is, is always going to feel oily. Um, the reason being is that the thin metal that they use um, it rusts easy so they don't use aluminum per se this might actually might be a, might have a, face, a body but uh, I think they use a light, a light tin but I'm not sure and it's insignificant because it doesn't really come into contact with anything when you're using it um, but what I'm going to be using it for is to verify the gap uh, or the space in between the actual element of the spark plug and the uh, uh, what do they call it? The you got the element, you got the little ceramic place. Basically, the, the distance that the electricity has to travel uh, to uh, create a proper spark, and, and that helps your engine run efficiently. Um, so I'll get back to you in a second when I get all this else lined up. I got to check, and I want to get to the page and get the information off that I need from the uh, spark plug. And I'm sure you don't want to see me thumbing around the, the book for a while. Um, so I'll get right back to you. Well, it's lovely. First of all, I wanted to go back to this part where I was calling the rail, the spark rail. It's actually a coil rail, and each one of these is a coil, um, and it charges two cylinders each. That's why there's three of them. Um, so just, just for clarification, I wanted to go ahead and go back and talk about that for a second. Secondly, um, the Haynes Manual had this brilliant piece of information in it, and it simply referred me to look at this label. Um, this label right here, uh, your Dama Chrysler Important Vehicle Information Label, which also states what kind of engine you have. And uh, right here, it says that your spark plug it has to have a gap of 0 0.035. Okay, so setting this back down. 
I'm going to gap all my spark plugs. Pre-gap, verify the gap that's already on, on the first few. So what I'll do is, um, I don't know if you can see it on here, but there is a small um, numbers, there's small numbers on here. So I pull out a point zero two five, and I'll find a, I could do it a couple different ways. You just basically add on what you need to make your gap right. Um, I don't like using the little thin ones unless I have to. They break, they tear. So you want to try to do this with as few as possible. That way you can, uh, you don't have any, any chance of damaging anything now. So I have a 0 0.10 and a 0 0.25, which gives me a 0.35, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'll grab one of my spark plugs. Um, I'll pull it out. Now this one doesn't have a little part spark plug cardboard on the bottom. Okay, so the reason that we're doing this um, is, is this. You, when you're setting your gap for your spark plugs, like I pulled this plug out of the box and it didn't have a cardboard little protection thing on here. Um, a lot of these spark plugs are set with a certain gap when they come from the factory. Um, and this gap is designed to give you the optimal spark for your vehicle. but they're shipped and in shipping things move around boxes fall over stuff gets hit you should always always check the gap on your spark plug before installing new spark plugs now as you see the gap on this was almost perfect how to do that again is to take your your, your feeler gauge which has numbers printed on it that are the width of the actual get the actual individual gauge that you have and add those gauges up until you get the desired amount now the amount that's required for this car is 0 0.035 that's the gap it's written right up here on the uh, uh, important vehicle information on the on the hood of the car which is something you don't on this particular car you don't want to lose um, that has a lot of good information on it and stuff that you won't be able to find anywhere else so you go through and you go through and you, you create your gap which is going to be done by finding your your two um, or maybe three uh, um, gauges that you need to make your number um, I recommend using the largest gauges you can um, for the simple reason that when you start using small gauges you could tear them they're very thin they go down to like uh, I want to say they go down a point there's a point zero one five right there and that's like a piece of paper it's like a piece of tin foil very very thin and you could really tear it so always try to use the biggest ones um, that you can so you don't wreck these because once you wreck these if you tear one of these off you might you just go buy another one it's another seven dollars that you're gonna spend eight dollars depending on where you get it and if you get a really nice one um, from one of these you know tool places that give um, you get these great big tool kits and all this other stuff or, or you know you go go to one of these large department stores and buy theirs or you go buy it off the back of a truck you're gonna spend a lot more for this this tool um, I couldn't find mine I went up to the local auto port store uh, on the scooter took me five minutes walked in found one for seven bucks I'm happy there are other uh, types of feeler gauges um, they have wire feeler gauges where they have a little wire that's a certain depth um, and those are very good and that's what a lot of spark plug manufacturers recommend you use um, they also have ones that you slide them around uh, a, a single disc and it gets thicker as it goes around and those are good too if you know how to use them and they're, they're accurate but this right here in my opinion is the best feeler gauge because it's not just for this application you could use this anytime you needed to find uh, any type of space um, it, it, any type of travel or anything any gap in anything that you need anywhere not just on an engine um, you can find it using this that's why I buy these they're simple they're easy they're old school they're for many different jobs and they work perfect for this job as well all right so now that we know this particular spark plug has the right gap we're gonna set it aside and then we'll repeat this on every other spark plug as we go along. All right, now removal of spark plugs. Removal of spark plugs are fairly easy. Your spark plug has several different parts. 
The one that you should be concerned the most with is this part right here. It is ceramic. Um, it can break. I've shattered them, removing before, removing spark plugs before. Um, I've detonated them in engines when I've ran them way too hot for way too long. Um, this this part right here is what cools the plug. Um, it, it, your heat transfer comes through here. So if you break this, the spark plug's basically no good. It'll still spark, but it's not going to be as efficient, and it's not going to do what you want. So. When you're putting these in and take them out, be special careful to uh, take special care. Excuse me, to uh, take care of this ceramic part right here. Um, the likelihood that you break one is slim. Like I said, I've broken them, but I've been working on cars my entire life. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove a spark plug. All right. So we reorient the camera so we can see the spark plug in the first cylinder and that would be this one right here um, this spark plug will be the first one I take out and I tend to work from front to back because I'm kinda like that I don't like bouncing around too much so what you're gonna do is you attach your extension to your socket wrench attach your 5.8 socket to your extension and what I like to do is make sure I have the right size because there is another size is to pre-fit one and it goes in very easily um, the reason that this is a spark plug socket is there's a small little rubber boot in the bottom that grabs hold of everything um, and helps you to get it uh, helps you get a grip on it so it'll come out easily and you won't run into breaking it necessarily all right so we're gonna go after the first one and I'm kind of doing this from an angle that I would not normally do this to help you help you see this too is you want to take your left hand and hold the, the, the head of the socket. It's kicking up a little bit. It still is March and it's rather breezy. Alright, and take your right hand and I usually use the palm of my hand and just push on it. And as you can see, it's rather easy. You don't have to use a lot of pressure. I did not take these off beforehand these are straight taken off I didn't take them out I didn't do anything to them because I knew they would be easy all right give me one second my son is pulling up I'll be right back okay. that was my youngest son come running up and he just got back from school he was telling me about his day so like I said this is these are the kind of things that we do so that way we can have the money to do things with the kids um, now there's not a lot of torque, not a lot of uh, uh, difficulty in doing this. Once you get it and it's loose, I'll disconnect this. I usually disconnect the socket. Well, this one I didn't have to. I pulled it all out at once. Um, and there we go. We have a little bit of uh, oil carbon scoring on there. It looks like it's gotten hot a couple times, so I'll have to check that. Uh, you can tell when it gets hot by the uh, color on the tip um, that's not a surprise this car has gotten hot a couple times this past year um, and I've diagnosed it and I knew what it was what's causing it and how to fix it so um, what I'm taking out is a uh, <laughs> looks like about the same uh, plug that I put in so I'm not sure that it was a platinum plug I can't really tell um, it definitely wasn't the same quality of plug that I'm putting in it was, however, the same size. Um, it was probably just a straight platinum plug. Now, I've already checked the gap on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back in. We're going to, of course, reverse our wrench with the little one on the side. But before I do that, go around where I can see the hole. What I'm going to do is with the extension in my hand, I'm going to slide it into the open hole like that and you'll feel it fall in and I'm going to give it a couple turns let to where I can't I can pull the socket but I can't pull the uh, plug back out so I know I've got that threaded and started um, before a lot of people used to put oil on their plugs um, and I'll probably do that on some some applications just a little bit of oil to help thread them down. Some people recommend you put um, 
a little bit of a thread lock on there. Um, with this particular type, it's got a locking ring. It's like a washer, and I'm tightening this while I'm talking to you. Um, it doesn't really require that. Um, you just, the, the locking washer will keep it from moving at all, so you don't need to be worried about having some sort of uh, uh, lubrication to hold it or, or any thread tight, you know, thread tightener to hold it. Now once you get this tight, you want to give it one quarter turn and you're tight. You don't want to over tighten these. If you over tighten them, they will break. Um, you'll shatter that top, like I said. You'll put them too far down and the gap will be wrong. Um, so you just want a quarter turn is generally plenty. Of, there's actual torque specifications you can follow. Um, but I've never had a problem with my quarter turns. Um, some people say use a little less. I think it's fine. All right, so now we're going to change our thing and move on to the next one and uh, I'll talk less and work more that way we can get going on here I'll probably speed this up for you Alright, now I can't really see this where I'm at, so I'm kind of working dark. So what you want to do when you're working dark, you want to visualize what you're working on in your mind. And take your time. And if it doesn't feel right, step back and take a look at where you can see. Go stay where you can see the part and look at it again. Because uh, 
many times this is this is where people make mistakes stuff that they can't see or, or what intimidates some people yeah it's really just as easy as everything else that you've been doing you just have to think with you have to just close your eyes and use different senses um, your feel your sense of feel your sense of uh, your, 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 the touch you, you'll feel it you'll know when it's loosening up and I always close my eyes when I do this because it actually robs the mind of the visual stimuli um, and it may be something that's just totally superstitious to me but I always thought that if I can't see I can still do oh, that one's got a little bit of oil looks like a little bit of carbon on that one too yeah we definitely ran hot for a while this year all right so going back to what I was saying is just go ahead and 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 you know take your time and yeah this might take a professional a third of the time that I have when he pulls out his air ratchet and his all of his magical mystical know-how and just does it but that doesn't mean that I'm not doing it right as well it doesn't mean you can't do it as right as well what you have is the ability you just don't have the knowledge. The knowledge comes from talking to friends, family, people who've done this. Um, there are a group of us in our early to late 40s now who grew up in between the time of the computerized car and the original cars that didn't have the computers that still know how to do a lot of things by hand because it wasn't that difficult. It, the the difficulties came with the computerization of the car where the governments got involved more in the cars for their um, to try to clean them up and the more difficult they made it the more difficult the actual engine you know the actual the motor companies made it because they were, began to realize that it was better for them that you take your car back to them to get it serviced they could make a lot more money on the servicing of the vehicles than they could on the actual um, sale, sale of the vehicles. Um, it's kind of like that, you know, that's how people think they're going to over engineer something and make it difficult for people to work on their own so you have to take it back to the quote unquote so called experts. When basically what they're doing is they're robbing themselves of the ability to make quality cars and they're robbing themselves of the ability to create um, a they create a a, a a lasting impression with their customers Saturn was close Saturn came real close doing this and I'm gonna start this last plug if I don't knock over the, what happened if I don't knock over the camera while I'm talking Saturn came real close and, and if Saturn had had a vehicle that I liked, I might have bought a Saturn. Their, their problem wasn't making things that people could fix. They made cars that people could fix. I just didn't find their cars something that I wanted to drive. Um, and that being said, you know, some of the things that you saw on a, a Saturn, I wish they'd have on every car. I would love to be able to change my transmission fluid without having, to, without having to tear apart the bottom of my transmission to do it. Um, they had a filter that was like your oil filter in their cars. And uh, when you went to change your transmission fluid, you could change your transmission fluid when you change your oil. And uh, the longer... Transmission fluids are probably one of the most overlooked things on a car. Most people don't bother changing their transmission fluid because they don't know they can and they don't know that they should. The yeah, other book says go ahead and change it 60,000 miles, but most people are 
not really paying attention to it by the time we get there. Okay, all right. Well, while I was running my mouth, I got that last one tightened up and in there. So now we're going to reseat the uh, coil rail. I'm going to take a second before I get to this. Um, when we do this, you're going to have to make sure that each one of your um, spark plug boots goes over top of your spark plug. So this is going to take a little bit of adjustment. You want to get a little sip of coffee or something, and then I'll get back to you on this. Um, this is probably the hardest part of the entire job. That being said, it's not that hard. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So first thing I want to do, is before I start turning all this stuff up, because this is where all the dust was sitting at, is I want to go ahead and yeah, put that engine oil back on there. Now, so like I said, this is going to be a matter of relining everything back up and not knocking over the camera at the same time, which we're seeming to lose that fight. I'll spread out the legs a little bit more. So, take your parts, yeah. line them up, try to remember which way you turned them the first time, and turn them back. All right, now, I don't know if you can see this, so I'm going to move the camera so you probably can. As you just look down in here, you'll see I've lined up the first one. Uh-oh, battery. Well, we're going to have to finish this job in a few minutes, it looks like, because it looks like I'm getting ready to die out of battery, kill the battery. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what I'm going to do as long as we have battery, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we line up the first one. And we want to kind of line each one up real quick. Oh, and they went over real fast. That's a good thing. So now you're going to push them back on ever so slightly. Once you've got them started, camera's still on. We're going to go ahead and start that front one. Bolt by hand. All right, time to start her. right up first try well not first try second try um and there we have it so just changing your spark plugs simple easy money saving All right, again, what we used, I'll show you real quick what we used besides our camera, 
and I'll show you in the back of the 58. We used one feeler gauge, inexpensive, multi-use, should be part of everybody's toolkit. We used one half inch socket. You don't have to have fancy bancy black ones like I have. One socket wrench. Extension. One five eighths socket. Spark plug socket. Six new, these are old, but six new spark plugs. There's four. And there's two more. One Haynes manual. And one pair of vice grips to hold our hood up. That's it. Tools you should probably already have. If you're contemplating doing this, you should already have. If you're just getting into this, the first thing you should probably buy. Um, socket sets aren't very expensive. You don't need a great one. It doesn't have to be a name brand. I use a lot of name brands. So that was that. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please leave a comment. Please subscribe. I'll be changing some spark plugs in the 58 in the next few days. I got some. Uh, I had to change the oil in the in the in the uh, chair in the uh, Grand Cherokee. I might even have my son do that, and we'll let him let him do it. Let him do the uh, the oil change in the the Cherokee, and we can watch. Remember, however, when you're done with a job and you're cleaning up, make sure to clean all this grime off your your hands. It will mess everything up. Your clothes, your wall. So. Just remember, clean it up, do it up, and get ready to come back out, and always, always have fun while you're working on your car. If your car starts to bother you, take a step back. Think about it. Go inside. Go over, turn on the radio, listen to a song, walk away. But when you come back to it, remember that working on your car can be relaxing. It can be fun. It can save you money. And it will give you a sense of accomplishment that you had a chance that you've actually done something for yourself with your hands. And don't be afraid to ask people. Don't think that you just got to go on the internet. You might have a neighbor next door who's, you know, he's an older guy. Um, and he's been, you know, he's out there every day just doing nothing stuff. And he's a nice guy. He might be able to teach you something. Well, that's enough for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a, my first DIY do-it-yourself uh, video and uh, have a good one but most importantly have fun